Wow, it's Wolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash building video. It's, it's actually a series this time. I'm starting a new level series. I don't have a name for it or anything. I'll be taking name suggestions in the comments as we go on. I just unlocked a UFO. That's hype. Not sure why my sound effects aren't working. Hello? Anyway, I feel like making an easy demon that hopefully has good gameplay, unlike Wacky. Hopefully this video is out by the time I'm uploading this one. If not, that's embarrassing from audiovisual. We made a collab video a while ago, and it was actually embarrassing how different difficult I found it to build a new level. So I gotta get back to it, guys. I'm gonna use the music library. I'm just gonna go into Fox by Sharabon. You might know this song from Just Shapes and Beats, or if you're just a fan of Sharabon himself, but this song is extremely popular. I really like it. I don't know what the start off set I'm gonna use is. I'm pretty sure in the music library, what I can do is play this song and then drag this slider across. Okay, 83 seconds seems like a good spot to fade in. So let's just put 83 in this box. That seems decent, but we should probably try and align it so that it starts yeah, 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 right about here. And we're going to add a spawn group just to start off the level. That's my new group 1, by the way. Remember in 2.1 when group 1 was always my alpha trigger, zero opacity type beat? Nope, we're not doing that. Because now we have the hide button, which is going to be used for this triangle object that I'm going to use this, the spawn group for this level. I'm feeling that we start off with a ship right here. But instead of just placing it and just falling into the start, I kind of want to do an animation. So this portal is going to be group number two. I'm going to place a scale trigger for group number two and divide it by 10 times on both the X and the Y on a zero second duration. So as we start, it is minuscule. You see the size of that thing? My ship nose is bigger than it. But as the level starts, we are going to scale this thing up by 10 times on both the X and the Y on an ease in out. And this can honestly last for like 1.5 seconds. Target two again. There we go. Uh, it's not quite the slay that I thought it was. Maybe if I ease out, it'll be bigger. Yeah, that's good. But we should also rotate it. That can also be an ease out type of thing just by putting two in there. The same 1.5 and we can honestly put like 90 degree rotation also on ease out. So when we start the level, this portal is just going to gradually rotate towards us, but it kind of sucks because you can see it right as you start. So we have to toggle this off before the level and then literally one frame into the level, we have to toggle it back on. This is going to be really weird. Let's just hope this works out. Yes. I don't know if you see that the portal kind of lights up and has this weird overlay as we go through it. I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to look into the extra settings here. No effect, maybe. There we go, perfect. That's a nice smooth transition to start our level. I feel like using invisible saws for this section on a nice slow rotation, 20 degrees should do. We're gonna be putting a couple of different ones, some with negative rotations. I'm just gonna use the same saw blade, but scaled down instead of placing these kinds. I'm just gonna put nice little gravity portals in our flight here just to plan things out. We're gonna put structures in too, but just to open it up, I'm gonna be putting a lot of moving objects above these invisible blocks. And I think that's just gonna be a nice climactic opener to have a bunch of them. Also, just to slowly introduce more variation into the part, I need to get rid of this habit where I elevate the spikes off of the blocks. It's really annoying. I don't know why I do it every time. I just do. We could probably raise this block up like this. It just looks better. That's slightly off sync and it's bothering me. Thinking of putting a spider orb to land on this block and flying up there just to sync with this portal. This would work out with the saw blades that I've been using. I should probably snap all of these to grid, which is going to make it a lot easier to decorate. In that case, I'll move this along. Don't like how that saw blade sticks out, so I'm going to squish it across. Oh, these are off grid too. Interesting. I have not really planned this out, have I? Uh, right here, please. Hmm. Trying to figure out how this structure would look best. This might actually be cool. Makes you use that momentum to get down onto this block here. That's a nice gimmick, how you have to avoid the pad. I really like that. To make it a more convincing fake, I'm going to use a saw blade at the top that's slightly invisible. What I should have done when I started the ship section was check the borders on this portal, just so I can see exactly where the borders of the screen are. Okay, we're just going to have a little duck right here where you have to go under the saw blade. We also have a block that we have to stand on here. Let's just make sure this plays out well. We're going through mini up here. That feels very jumpy. I don't know why. I'm going to extend that by another block. This whole thing's been very smooth so far, so I don't want to mess it up with any janky movements. Okay, there we go. That works well. We can transition right there into a regular sized portal. Maybe a little bit faster to help us prepare for the drop. Just going to do a little funny thing with the speed changer by hiding it and then stretching it really far on the warp just to make sure that you hit it at the exact same point all the way across. You can't see it, but if I just hit that cheeky F6, yes you can. Wait, that's not symmetrical. Uh, 
Uh, hold on. Hmm. Maybe I can just extend this a little bit upwards like this, just to make it match. Then we can probably do a fun transition with this set of spikes, so that you have to click immediately when you hit the portal, which is nice sight reading, because it shows you exactly when you need to click. I think I'm doing pretty well right here. Should maybe just extend this one more block across, and a little bit over, like that. Doesn't quite boost you the way that I wanted it to, so maybe I'll put a little orb in here. That works. Maybe I can continue what I was going for with another setup here. Oh, that works out so well. And I can put another one of these saw blades just in here. This is clever. This forces you to switch gravity to hit this yellow pad. I'm actually thinking of doing a double switch here with a mini portal in front, just half space to one side. One day I'll learn that these buttons exist, dude. I can do a little section where you have to hold to avoid these spikes. Or maybe I could do something like this with a green orb in the ground. That flows well. Love it. Probably just going to stick this a little bit outside of the block because what I noticed here was to hit that orb, I had to leave this block when I was holding against it, which means it's a very quick hold and release and click. So I want to make sure that we always hit this, which is why I'm actually going to put it all the way up here and scale it up to like a 1.4, just to make sure that if you are still holding and you do a quick hold and release that you still make it. And to control this, I can put another orb straight away down onto this block. And by doing so, I kind of force us up into the air. I can maybe move this a little bit to the right. It's cool. I just don't like how that one sinks. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right and make it bigger so that you can still hit it the same way that I just did, but to properly sink it, you can work a little bit later and that makes it more fun to play. So there's a bit more clutch involved, but you can still play it nice and beautifully if you choose to do so or if you're skilled enough to do so. You can play it beautifully. What am I talking about? Bro's waffling. You can, you can play it elegantly and then we can go into a cube with a little speed boost. Now I'm actually going to secretly put some force blocks inside here. I'm going to scale it up on the Y to three times just so it fills this box. I'm just going to put the force on like five. It's You're not, not going to notice it at all. It's just to make sure the cube always hits the ground so you can then make this little step down jump that I'm going to do. Because there are two very quick portals. I know it's an easy demon and you should have control, but I just want to make sure it's all good going through. You see how you get pushed down? I'm going to start using flat spikes just for this little breakdown section. And I'm also going to just toggle this little preview line that's on the portal. I like that. I dig it a lot. I don't even need the second pad. For now, we're going to tweak this layout to make it a lot more interesting because it is very static and boring as it is just now. Plus, you can barely see those invisible saws. I want to fix that with moving objects that go on top of them. This is hype. Oh, that transition's a little bit weird. I think all we have to do is just shift this down. Let's just test this new transition. Works well. Nice. Okay, so we're going to check these borders once again. Not only are all of these saw blades going to have a group, which is going to be three, apparently. We're going to put this like B2, just so that if push comes to shove and they end up overlaying with a block, they go underneath. They're going to have a block above them, and I don't know what object I'm going to use just yet. I actually think I'm going to go old school and use a pulsing object, scaled up a little bit, like one point. That looks good. 1.42. Such an odd number. So quirky. That's going to be group four, and it's going to be on the layer above. Actually, we can just push this to the top of B2. These are going to go on top of the saw blades, just like this. But don't worry, they're placed on edit to layer number two as well, just so I can separate them. Annoying fact about spikes, by the way, you can see them on all the edit to layers. Why? Wait, maybe it's different for non-preview mode. Okay, it's different for non-preview mode, but still fun fact. They're going on color channel one, which I'm probably going to make white for this level, or something that matches the object. Whatever the object color ends up being, we're going to set up area move effects, which is going to be done starting with number three, which is going to be the actual saw blade itself. First off, we're taking ease in out because that is just a really nice easing. We could actually go exponential in out, but I'm going to go ease in out because I feel like I use exponential too much. So what we have to do is make this target the player so that as we get closer to it, it is going to snap into place, which is this option. This one moves it away from us. This one moves it towards us. The target group ID starting off with number three, which is the baseline saw. Then we're just going to put length 100. We're going to put the move distance as 20, just so you can see what's happening. As we get closer to the saw blades, they're going into place. But this is nowhere near enough space for us to react, right? I fell for the fake again, but we don't talk about that. What we're going to do is just bump this up past the slide limit point to make it 200. So this makes it a lot more natural, right? I'm going to show you what happens when we drag up the move angle slider. This makes it so they go from the top to the bottom, which doesn't really make much sense. What I want is a 45 degree angle just to give us a little bit more time to react to them. So they're going to come to the left a little bit from the right so you can see them coming. Then I'm going to copy this area movement 
And I'm gonna change the easing to exponential in out for the detail, which is gonna be number four. I'm gonna decrease the length a little bit just so it happens a little bit quicker. The move distance is gonna be slightly more from 20 to 30, and I'm gonna keep the 45 degree angle, I think. There we go. So the details are kind of snapping on. You see them move a little bit more drastically, right? You wanna play with this value because the easing actually affects what happens here a lot. Now this is just unsight readable. So I really shouldn't be using exponential in out for this. I should really be using ease in out with like a 150 probably. I wanna layer it nicely. Yeah, you can see this is happening in two parts. So you get the clue with the invisible object moving closer and then the physical object is there to show you that the object is there, just a little bit later, right? Then I'm gonna do something similar for the portals in the level. Now to make this the most sight readable it can possibly be, I'm gonna take off the move angle. So you know exactly what point on the X axis this is going to happen. Same goes for this little transition here. Speed changes can't actually move on the x-axis with a move trigger or anything because it would mess up the level. I'm going to copy this area movement and immediately take off the move angle, then change it to group number five. I'm going to make the move distance something like 15. It's going to be less than the 20 and the 30 that we put on the other triggers, but it's still going to be noticeable. There we go. So this portal kind of rises up with us, right? It looks cool. I dig it. I just don't like how this spider orb affects the level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the setting that all of this is under. So no longer is the player's Y coordinate going to affect how this works. This one is a version of this setting that doesn't change with the player's X and Y. And I feel like it's just a lot more consistent, especially when we're teleporting through the level. There's no jumpiness. You can see the details are moving into place. I'm going to turn off the annoying particles in the level before we get into it too much, just by putting a background effect off. The level just looks a lot nicer this way. We can see exactly exactly what's going on, especially when we've got our markers for the invisible saw blades with pulsing objects that are kind of small and hard to see anyway. So this is what I've got so far. I'm going to build off this in the next episode with a lot more detail and stuff, but I just wanted to make a quick video just showing how I'm making my gameplay. Thank you so much for watching this Jump Dash video. Check the links in the description, leave a like and subscribe, and have a good day.